A very good evening and welcome to this edition of the Fourth Estate, Charles Mongo Shampagi. And tonight, we will be having a discussion in a week that's been as crazy politically as anyone can imagine. In a week when one policeman dies in the line of duty trying to save life at a traffic road accident in Masaka, and where his colleagues or men wearing police uniform act like rogues beating up people on the streets of Kampala because they hold a different political opinion from the one they are apparently defending. But also a week when we see an intricate conflict that started in the 1960s continuing in South Sudan and the return of Ugandans supported by one section of the armed forces, the Uganda People's Defense Forces, returning home safely uh, from a chaotic South Sudan. But also a crazy world whereby you have an attempt at a coup of a guy who was in Kampala the other day and causing crazy traffic jams because roads were uh, blocked. And now about 6,000 people in Turkey arrested for apparently being part of a coup, almost 300 killed, and a country in chaos. That is Recep type Erdogan. In uh, southern France, in Nice, you have the killing by truck of 84 people. A guy just runs crazy and drives through so many people, including children until he's killed 84 people, injuring more than 200, and that chaos that is continuing, and of course, the United States of America. But tonight, we'll be concentrating our discussion on the crisis in South Sudan, because it directly affects this country, both by the number of Ugandans, they estimated 12,000 Ugandans living and working in South Sudan, about 3,000, 4,000 of them came back home this weekend, and uh, the chaos has kind of lulled for a moment, but is it yet Uhuru? To discuss that tonight, let me first introduce my colleague, Onapito Ekomoloid. Very nice to have you. Thank you, Charles. Where were you last weekend? Uh, I missed I, you. Uh, yes, I was unable to <laughs> be on the show last weekend. And thank you guys for having the discussion. Um, uh, I, I, and you did a fantastic job uh, with uh, Simon and uh, the other colleagues that you had. Uh, Morrison mm. Wakakamba coming back after a uh, after long while. Mm. And uh, Ivan Okuda. Uh, we also have um, David Purkol. David once um, worked as uh, a deputy director of the external security organization. Deputy? deputy. Eh, you know, the director of the external security <laughs> organization. <laughs> twice. My apologies. <laughs> twice, <Okay>. actually. <laughs> you, you held the position twice, and uh, you're once mm. a minister. And you have a good understanding of uh, politics in the region, especially coming from um, Karamoja, which shares a border with South Sudan. Mm. Very nice to have you. Thank you, and good evening, viewers. Um, gentlemen, let me start with a quick one. Um, the release of Kiza Besige on Monday, last, uh, no, no, on Tuesday actually, uh, because he appeared in court on Tuesday and then uh, uh, he was uh, freed on bail on uh, Tuesday uh, by Justice Masalo Musene, Wilson Masalo Musene. And then we see police, uh, some people are wrongly claiming that police was using herding sticks uh, for <laughs> cattle to beat up people. But any decent cattle keeper that I know today does not allow anyone to beat their cows the way the police was beating up those people. And then you have Besige going through um, Barara yesterday uh, fairly quietly mm -hmm. and today in uh, Rukunjiri also with uh, some reasonable calmness with a lot of police uh, providing security without confronting. There are reports that uh, some of uh, the people among his group of supporters uh, attempted, pelted police with uh, stones in Barara. Uh, of course that needs to be verified. But th that contrast with uh, a policeman who goes to do his job to try and protect life and save life at an accident scene and then he gets rammed and killed. Well, I'll start from where you started the, the release of Kisa Besige from uh, Luzera after nearly three months. I sort of, I saw it coming because I think there is a trend to most things in, uh, in life, you know? The trend of his cat and mouse with President Museveni was almost always going to end in this way. I think putting him in jail was sort of to diffuse, you know, mm. the, the, the build-up of his uh, resistance or defiance, as he likes to call it. And I think by the time he got out, I think the president had kind of checked that uh, there wasn't a major threat if he got out. And maybe they thought he had learned his lesson, but he's come out still... Are you surprised that uh, he came out vowing to begin where he stopped and actually? Um, I'm not surprised he, he, because he that is his uh, stock of trade. I mean, mm -hmm. <laughs> unless if he's going to leave politics. But 
he has to do it his way. That's how he has always done. Really, for him and the president, it's a question of, as I say, cut and mouth. You know, it's, what some may say it's almost a game because it can be a dangerous game because some people's lives get uh, hurt, some people get get killed, some people get beaten. But I'm not surprised. And I, the, and the I reaction think of the police, the minister of, uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, the, 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 the minister of state for internal affairs mm -hmm. has said the police should apologize. But the, the reaction of the police, beating up people like... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, actually, you have rogues in police uniform or standing next to um, thugs beating up people. I, I, are you surprised by that? And, and especially when the Inspector General of Police comes out and defends Again, the action of the police? I'm not surprised. I think there has been a building to, to this kind of uh, beating. It's not the first time. So it's almost becoming a routine. Mm. And I think the police finds that he has worked in many respects. Of course, it appears outrageous, you know, in the face of it. But there are people who, I, I saw a number of, uh, of people defending it other than the IGP. Mm. Have the government people have defended it. They think the police is being provoked. It's, it's, it's just one of these things, uh, one of those things, the way the police and Kisa basically have taken it on. They keep on uh, beating his Is there an end game in your view? Oh, I, I don't see. Because I think after his Western tour, I, I mean, if he continues attracting those kind of crowds in Barra, then the police will again have reason to say he needs to be taken to Nagalama at minimum, <laughs> put back in his in his house arrest. So it's likely let to continue. Le, le, let me turn to uh, mm -hmm. David uh, for call. Uh, David, surprised I think, by this I think basically as a citizen, and uh, all of us as citizens whose rights have been guaranteed, even under Chapter 4 of our Constitution, so if you take from that perspective, which I think should be, be uh, because uh, Besije, as a citizen of Uganda, has not yet been, has not been excluded from the Constitution. So you can't remove him from the Constitution and say the rest of us should enjoy rights of movement, right of uh, all rights of life, right to even, even a, a fair hearing, okay? And then for Besije, you restrain him. So that injustice... He's not at the same level of innocence. If we you are see, to go by former you see, attorney general. You have elected. Yes. You, you, you have gone for elections. Mm. Immediately you have finished dropping your ballot paper. You are put under arrest. Before even results come out. And they make sure you stay there for over 40 days. So that you are 30 days. which the, the 10 days which the law allows for you to go to complain. The 30 days which the Supreme Court must use to determine that complaint is over. Now, look at that alone, even if you were the one. Then uh, you get this endless, whether in Kasangati court, whether in what, whether in this van or the other van, uh, and so forth in Moroto, or then now riots there and people, uh, two prisoners fight, one is killed, was pro-government, and then you run away with him to Luzira, and then you don't want a court to sit in Akawa. You want the court to go to Luzira, you know, and sit from there. You know, it's been really, you look at this whole episode, and like you said, when will it end? Now, even when courts have uh, given him that bail. Now, I want to ask Kaihura, Kaihura or, because I, I, I have problems pronouncing Kaihura. I, I say Kaihura. And because they unleash horror mm. uh, on the <laughs> citizens, so there is Kai horror police, okay? So, so which unleashes horror uh, on citizens? You just see it uh, almost every day. Uh, now, I want to ask Kai Hora, is, is this government of NRM, is it so weak that it can fall over somebody swearing on social media, not shown by Chief Justice? You mean after 35 or 30 years or so, the structures of government are so weak that if Besige drives alone up to Najanankumi, the government will fall. That you can't even give him motor riders, okay, to hurry him up on the, and lead him on the, where you want so that he goes to do his job in Najanankumi and come back, you know, for one day, two days, three days. It, it will become routine, it will become normal. Why are you attracting all this attention on him? So is there a collusion between Kaihura and Besige? Because his main campaign actually is now Kaihura and mm. Museveni. Because why, why do you feel so offended if somebody calls himself the president of the people and you know that he's not and he's just, 
is a people's president. And you know that he's not sworn by the chief justice. It's of no effect, you know, and therefore does that. Not. So why does somebody just get so offended and blow an anthill into a mountain and call it treason? So I'm just asking that what were we doing in this government if it is so weak that uh, just, you know, why must you resort to beating citizens the way we are seeing? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it makes some of us look so, it's, it's not feel about, so it's bad. It's not just about the swearing in. Listen. Um, uh, the, the, the treason case that's being built uh, on Besiji, uh, you, you have an experience. You're still um, w within the government when uh, there were these allegations that Besiji was actually involved in now, more. If you are not able, if, 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 if somebody was involved, but if you are not able to prove it in courts of law, up to now, all those treason cases have not held any water because the state has failed to prosecute it successfully. So why do you continue actually manufacturing these? And if you want, why don't you get a tight case? Why, why do you... It becomes a laughing but stock. You, you, you've been, you've been so, at the center of this, uh, David. But, but you see, why, why, can you tell us, where exactly does it fail? Now, because we need to know... Is this going to continue like this? The police was on holiday for 62 days because they had put Besige in Luzira. First in Moloto, then in Luzira. The moment he gets out, they deploy. And on and tells you, was that sustainable? Yes, that's the question. Now, the question is, what's the other option? Allow him to move freely. And then? What will happen? Well, uh, because, if because, ask, because because if, if you because ask, but if I, you I ask guess the same you question, can understand if the, you ask the question, you can understand the position of the state because you know state power. Yes, you know better than me. It's not all about the reality. It's not about the fact that you are legal. There is also the perception of the people. People need to see you to be in control because leaders are actually living fear of the people. You don't want someone challenging what is supposed to be yours even if it's just for appearance purposes. Because the people are out there seeing that this government is not in control. If you, someone whom you, you believe you have defeated in elections is out on the street challenging if you are the sure, election, I, I then want to believe, I want to that's believe that. That's not what the state expects. Unfortunately, well, we don't, let, and, and, let me agree. Just, just, just mm. wait a moment. Unfortunately, we don't have the police here mm. to be able to make its own case. But we have listened to, we, we've listened to the police, police before. Police spokespeople people have been speaking almost every week. No, I've been asking uh, the IGB yeah. to come on the show. He hasn't, he hasn't found the time yet to come and to the who, show. And I hope he can find the time and come to the show. Who can speak for him except himself? Yeah. And they have the I, and, so many and, 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 they pay. And, and I'm keen to move away from this discussion because no, we wanted to spend a lot more time discussing South Sudan. Don't move away because police. when yes. did these Karimujong sticks or the Bahima sticks carrying their, carrying their cattle become part of police uniform? Who's the contractor? Who's the supplier? When were they procured? Uh, and under what tender? And so forth. So who is this? Because police elsewhere in the world carry buttons those short sticks. Mm. Mm. But they are, they are identical, they are, they, you, know, you know, police number this as this. But when did this, is somebody bringing Balalo culture or Karimajong, cal, uh, you know, herdsmen culture into the police force and smuggling uh, mm. uh, cattle keeping into the police and making fun of our police and really reducing our police to these uh, stick welding, uh, you know, a kind of uh, in Tungam. Where is this leopard who said this anas was touched the other day? Mm. Uh, you know, in, in, in uh, you know, in uh, when people are beating his people, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, because tiger, you know, leopards have long, long tails. I don't know these ones in Intungam, whether mm. it's from a game park or a game reserve in Sinjiro, wherever it is, you know, that have short tails like that of a goat. And that uh, someone can, can easily touch. So now, that is aside. We saw the president come out and Kale Kahura fly the helicopter just because somebody had beaten or some people had beaten what? Now, wh where is this helicopter now when police or those putting on uniform? Now, what is disappointing again is when you, I pro when you profile those people, like the black members the other time. Mm and recognize their faces. And you find this one was in Rag, this one was supposed to be serving sentence in, in Luzira. Where did he come out? This one is supposed to. Is this become a, a Chifesi government? Yeah, is, are we still having Uganda police force? Where did Uganda police force go? This, this standard, whatever bureau within, which deals with standards and quality control within the police, where is it? 
to really assure standards. Why, why, why are we allowing the name of the police to be ruined like this? Now, if it is true that citizens voted NRM in the last election, which is disputable, but I would like to, for now to respect the view of the, the Supreme Court and say that NRM was elected. Is this the NRM that is beating people? Mm -hmm. Is that this NRM that was elected the other day, that claims it was elected? Okay. Or there is another government within a government? That is doing this. Okay, let, 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 let's take this uh, forward and ask the question. I, I know you're going forward uh, a few months ago, but <laughs> I mean the country is still going forward, <laughs> and for us, regardless, what we must go forward, okay. and that's why the country must move forward. <laughs> it's it's going forward, <laughs> it, going behind is no option. Applied, okay, applied we just have to go forward. My, 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 on breaks for my, my, my question now. is: <laughs> How does this get resolved, in your opinion? Mm. You, you've been a player. Well, in, at some in, point, in at some point, there has to be soul searching so to search for the soul of this country and reach out to each other and there will be a conversation and national uh, dialogue uh, and uh, uh, talks and uh, in terms of what we should do what we should not do okay. because i don't think this should be a culture of the government okay we okay? need to take a quick uh, commercial a wrong break culture um, somebody's bringing their culture into government and making it a government culture and uh, I think it must be resisted. I, I was reading a bulletin of one of the churches today, uh, one of the summons in church, and they were saying, wh wh one of the central questions they were asking, who is on trial? And I was asking myself, is it Kiza Besige and his supporters on trial, or is it Kale Kaihura and his, and the men and uh, women he commands who are on trial? But we'll be moving away from and that for subject. for three institutions are in trial, yeah. under trial. I said, should things go wrong, like they're going wrong, mm -hmm. should be electoral commission, should be held responsible, should be the police, and should be the judiciary. Because the three arms have, have the law in their hands. And should the country slide? And, and you, the political <laughs> actors, don't have responsibility? Well, because then you have a judiciary. At the end of the day, you have a law. You have a law enforcement agency. The Electoral Commission and you have conducted an election and gave a result. The judiciary I had a you, petition the, you, had a petition and resolved it. And many the are police, being thrown out. The police is... Okay. Ma many, many of the so-called success but, but have Charles, been thrown out. Who is on trial? The judiciary just is very look, important. For me, uh, who is on trial? I think both government and the, is it the opposition or Kisa Vesje directly is in trial. Because people need to see something new out of this. They need to see something decisive. Take If Vesje also continues its approach of going out on the street or wanting to, to go out on the street and it does not resolve the problem, then with time, it's, it's, it's seriously on trial. Okay. Because you must be clear what is the end game. Yeah. I know for a number of years he has promised that this government is falling. And if it doesn't fall, then some of his supporters will start saying he's a joker. Okay. We need to take a quick commercial <laughs> break. Um, um, <coughs> and when we come back, we'll be concentrating a discussion mm -hmm. on the crisis in South Sudan. We'll bring back. You're still watching the fourth estate. Ending a crazy week. Or starting another. Uh, we, we don't know how the other, this other one will be playing out. But we'll be watching what happens and bring you up to speed with what has been going on. We'll turn our discussion to the crisis in South Sudan. There is still, um, it's still not clear where uh, first vice president, Riek Machar, is. He's also the leader of the SPLM in opposition, the Sudanese People's Liberation Movement in opposition. We saw the outbreak of violence in that country on Thursday last week that continued through Friday, Saturday, and since Monday, some uneasy calm has been holding in that country with just a few skirmishes here and there. South Sudan is host to 12,500 UN peacekeeping forces under UNIMIS who have been living in that country, who have been in that country since the signing of the CPA in 2005. But we see this sporadic outbreak of violence. In 2013, December, when Riyak Machar and Salva Kiir disagreed, it was the Uganda People's Defense Forces that deployed in that country to try and create some sanity and end what was known then, or what could actually have turned into a genocide. Between last Thursday and uh, b between the outbreak, the most recent outbreak, we had the killing of at least 300 people. Um, the numbers are not very clear, but uh, some say 270 upwards of uh, 300 and possibly could have been thousands of people. And Ugandans have been evacuated by the UPDF. Uh, some the first batches arriving in the country yesterday morning. Gentlemen, let me start with you, David. From your time, uh, uh, by the way, Teja Simwe has sent a message uh, to you regarding the first 
uh, quarter of our discussion, uh, which I'll put to you maybe a little bit later. But South Sudan, this is not a new conflict. I've had people make arguments and say that South Sudan needs to be given the opportunity to mature into a country. And they say all these other countries went through their episodes of fighting, of instability, before they stabilized, including the Western developed world. My question to you is, a country that became, 10 years ago, 2005, uh, the signing of the CPA when they gained some autonomy, and actually 2011, after the referendum when they formed the current government, must South Sudan reinvent the wheel of Europe of barbarians, uh, the, 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 the war in America that created uh, the current United States of America, or Uganda's past? Are there opportunities for new countries to learn from past experiences rather than to reinvent the wheel? It's called leapfrogging. And must they go through what we went through? Can't there be lessons learned and therefore do things differently? And more so, when there is a big brother called Uganda, and President Museveni, who's an experienced guerrilla fighter and organizing a government, although he's faltering now towards his last years of, uh, of administration, in the, the Museveni of the latter years uh, and the Museveni of the early days, uh, but you can see uh, this mistake. So at what point did Museveni leave South Sudan to fall this way? Uh, Museveni, Uganda, with, uh, with uh, Ethiopia, could have fixed this problem in just two countries alone and would have uh, by now created the nucleus around which a solution would have been found. How would they have but, fixed uh, the Because okay. uh, they put boots on the ground mm -hmm. okay, to cause a stalemate between the South and the North Sudan, which resulted into a negotiation in Naivasha and, uh, and therefore the outcome of the seven years of transition and uh, where unity was to be made attractive as first option. And if it is not, then go into a referendum and separate the two Sudans. Now, for this to boil to a point in 2013 December and result in this, as though we had taken leave as Uganda uh, and we are not in this region and our leaders. So at what point uh, did, this, uh, did we lose? Again, we put boots on the ground as Uganda, understand to stabilize the situation in Juba and again uh, withdraw Ugandans, so, okay, uh, rescue Ugandans to come out. But what were, did our troops go to do in Bentwi, in Malakal, in Bor? You know? So we went siding with one side of the conflict. Now, this side we are protecting. Why didn't we cause it to behave and be magnanimous and use the formulas Museveni used? Of course, there was uh, FEDEMU, there was UFM, there was UNRF1, UNRF2. There have been groups that have been, UNLA, who have been absorbed into and turned into UPDF. How come these lessons were not uh, made readily available by the handlers of KIR? when he became president, by the handlers of uh, the chief of staffs of, of Sudan and the army. So how come that we became so mean and never made this available? Uh, even in the, but, uh, even uh, in the uh, two uh, years. Are, are, are you being fair? Uh, I'm, to, I'm saying uh, Are you being fair to Uganda and to Museveni? Yes. Because you have more players. If you have saved, if you, Sudan, if you have saved, okay. Yes. Just a moment. South Sudan is an independent country. <clears throat> but you know you have to take care of the interests of Sudan uh, Sudan Khartoum. You have to take care of the interests of Ethiopia. You have to take care of the, the interests of Uganda, the interests of Kenya, and the interests of other countries that share a border with South Sudan. Now, as I speak, I'm saying that the war broke in 2013. We pushed in boots. They stayed there until only recently when we came back. So what did we do in these two years? to build the capacity of this KIR and, uh, so that this does not reoccur. Now, for me, where the region let down South Sudanese is to have allowed these two protagonists who had failed to reach an agreement. Even if you gave them another two years, they would not have agreed. 
Mm. You remember, so they, I, I'm told the agreement so they signed came on um, a plane uh, by the name of Air Force. I don't want to say one, two, three, or four, and was signed as mm. was. And Salva Kir said this agreement is unimplementable. Now, to make two protagonists to be to have two commanders in chief, Kir is a commander in chief of the SPLA in government. And then the other one is a commander in chief of SPLA in opposition. And then you have two chief of staffs. And then they were supposed to have demilitarized Juba, a radius of 25 or so kilometers or so. And it was not done. Instead, there was reinforcement. Mm. And then there were plans to say, wait a minute, when, when Mashar comes, let him come in. Let's lure him in. This was in the, council, the GN Council of Elders, uh, where Akir is said to have discussed this matter. They were concerned Mashar is coming. They said, don't worry. Allow him to come, this time we will not escape. We'll fix him, we'll finish them. And then the Muers uh, under Mashar on the other side thought they would come and then how to do Once the, the thinkers. Now, there are 64 tribes in South Sudan. Now, this agreement between two large tribes, the Dinkas and the Nuers, and that's what the region gave them. Now, where do you put the other 62 communities, let, let, the let, Equatorians let, and so forth? Let, let me tell now, you. Should, is their business just living under Dinka domination? Or when you shift there under Nuer domination. Or oh, under Nuer Dinka domination. Yeah, yeah, so this Dinkism, Nuerism, uh, and uh, is this what the region uh, has given? So mine would have been take these guys out, the two of them, and let a neutral group run the transition and make sure they are not available in the next election. So if Kir and Mashar want to come, let them come to contest the election after the country has been pulled together by a, new, uh, by a force. That is neither, okay, uh, Kir, nor uh, Mach Mashar. Uh, Mashar. Okay. So that you give the country an opportunity. So, President Museveni... I, is that a responsibility of Uganda and Ugandans? Or is it a responsibility of South Sudanese and Uganda South Sudan? playing its part within the IGAD, within the East African region, within the UN, within the AU, using its position to put this forward and ensure this. Because Uganda is a capacity to put boots on the ground. Okay. Let me, let, let, let me turn to honor. Ona, you studied this, you worked very closely with the president for many years, and now you've been mm -hmm. advancing a particular position. Mm -hmm. You think, um, I, I don't know if they are viable and viable entities like <laughs> South Sudan, should be taken over by a more viable <laughs> <laughs> unit. Look, I, I think, first of all, if I say anything, I think it's really prudent to thank the UPDF for going inside South Sudan to get out the Ugandans who are stranded there and we hope they will all come out alive. Of course, it has risks in terms of perception. People are going to say, look, they're just walking in, these are their friends. It means they are, they are aware of what's happening, why haven't they done much more? And uh, I certainly agree that I think we could potentially do more. Our entering there to evacuate Uganda, which no country has done in a similar style. Mm. Not Kenya, I think they have a number of Kenyans there, not Ethiopia, not Eritrea. It means that we actually have some respect amongst the South Sudanese warring forces or even fear of the Ugandan army. They know what it can do. So m my view is that it's not just Uganda. I think the whole world, which has been at the center of creating South Sudan, that's the Western powers and other African countries, were not really honest with themselves. They knew the weaknesses of the South Sudanese, uh, not just leaders, I guess. These people went through so many years of war with Khartoum, and during their war, it was quite a very, very, uh, I mean, you could see there's a time when they were fighting naked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, didn't, they couldn't even access clothing. So they, they still needed to be held by the hand. I think South Sudan was a classic case of where the world should not fear to have an international administration for the sake of the people. But how, how do you have an international administration? Look, what constitutes an administration? Because look, uh, when yeah, UPDF went there, just, technically just the Uganda army you, you was having substantial control yes. of South Sudan militarily. You now you needed to follow that up with making sure that there were structures let, let for civilian let, let transformation. Me you, let me put back the question to you. Mm. You have a people that have spent the last 50 years mm. fighting for self-governance, uh, self mm. fighting for 
to, to be respected as people. And then you bring a force after they have just one day independence and impose it on them? You well, bring an administration after look, they have one we day are told, We are told repeatedly that when they couldn't help themselves, Salva Kira and his team invited Uganda to rescue the situation. That was an admission on their part. Machari that they couldn't uh, control the situation. How, how does that fit into the question that uh, Prokol was just raising? No, because a, a, a I, I think Machara at this point, six wherever he's hiding, six hold on. different tribes yes. in South Sudan. Two are dominant. The Dinkas, which is the tribe of Salva Kira, and the Nueres, which is the tribe of Riyak Machar. Salva you have pre supported look, by Uganda precisely to my point, those other tribes, wherever they are scattered all over South Sudan, what do they need at this point? They just need to make sure that their lives are safe first and foremost, and they are not sure they can live to see tomorrow. That's the argument. They that need as food. As speak that, now. That, they are starving, many of them. People in so here how are can you, the bushes. There's fighting yes, going yes, on. So how can, a, how can you advance any argument of sovereignty? You know? Where the sovereign entity cannot secure the lives of its people. No, but, but that's exactly, yeah. that's exactly <laughs> gentlemen, that's exactly the argument that Bashir mm. and his cohorts mm. raised. They said, we guarantee the safety of these people. I, I don't think yeah. Bashir was had the, the moral story to make that argument because his record clearly proved that he did not mean well for the South Sudanese. But I'm saying, there are other people who have proved that they mean well for South Sudanese in terms of giving aid. You go and take food there for people, now I'm told all the food was looted from the stores. So what's the point of so making Saleh this? So Salih and Kayanja will have to take it. No, I don't have about them talking no, of the yeah, WFP. I, I had them. Do I, that. I'm just well, saying. Down to Karamoja, mm. but there, there is a lot of to tokenism to towards people like South Sudan by the world, where we say give them food, but you know that the people who control the entity are not able to care for their people, so they should be sat down at the table. The AU now meeting in Chigali should not be preparing over the usual solution. Mm. They should be talking of real things. Let's put an African force there. Let's put an administration. We mean well for these people. It's not taking over for selfish reasons, but to save the lives of the people. Why is it only Africa, which you know, we are so petrified at the idea of uh, sort of uh, controlling another country which has been existing, dismembering it, doing what, so long as it's for the good of the people? Where is the evidence that, uh, well, uh, outside no, of Africa... For me, I don't need evidence. Yes. I don't uh, evidence. Uh, uh, I don't need... I need uh, reality. Why don't you need evidence? Hmm? Why don't you need evidence? No, no. You are saying yes. if it has not worked elsewhere, yes. then it can't work. Yes. No. Okay, so, let's uh, make it an experiment no. if you want to Okay, it's Timo. Hmm? You know what hmm? happened in East Timor. Yes. The UN took over, hmm. or conducted elections, hmm. and it is where now. Hmm. There are a few no, examples. You don't even hear about it mm -hmm. in the news. You don't news. hear at all. So what's, uh, hmm. what can, why can't it be done in South Sudan? Mm. Must it be allowed? Look at the minister of 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 of, 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 <laughs> or, 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 minister of energy mm. under Riyak Masha, beaten last night it's mm. bleeding in his well house. It's bleeding. Well, well, and well, well, our viewers, uh, can't, our uh, viewers uh, can't see this image. Well, I, well, I wish uh, they had an opportunity. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is uh, so. Even as we speak now, the fighting that has been going on this evening in Ye. So even when it moved to Juba, so people moved into Torit and took over to it and withdrew with the guns to the surrounding. People came from where yeah, and, uh, and looted. So, so people are taking advantage. <coughs> so so <coughs> they, they, how will this hold together? Even if Kir finished Mashar or Mashar finished uh, Kir mm. in, in these uh, skirmishes now, so how will it stop others who are not part of the equation to rise up? For me, mm. at, at a piecemeal yeah. level, so, so look, it's important at that the level, the UPDF could even, at a minimum, secure a safe haven for South Sudanese. Instead of them coming into Uganda, why don't but we secure uh, within their I, country? I, I, from I, my I, own I, intelligence I, sources, yes. definitely mm? there was a, co uh, <coughs> there's a, 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 a combo of UPDF. Mm. You leave this one, which is uh, mm. bringing out citizens. Mm. But the other one, they are not reporting. And including the arms they left behind. If it's and some person the lady doesn't I, I hear you, but that's what intelligence is. It's based on deniable evidence. Mm. Okay? And that's what makes intelligence intelligence. Mm. Because it's not information that's not <coughs> ordinarily available. Mm. But I can tell you that's why Kir will be saying we don't want to accept international forces or even regional forces. And Kampala will say we agree with them. Because there is what they are doing. They the, think this is an opportunity uh, uh, to finish uh, uh, Mashar uh, now. Uh, are we not rhetoric. ignoring a key factor? Mm. From what I have mm. heard, Ethiopia has always had immense interest in what goes on in South Sudan. They still do. Sudan itself, Sudan Khartoum, is still interested in what is going on in Sudan Juba. 
the international community, the Americans are interested in what's going on. Chinese are major players in that South Sudan economy. Kenyans are major players. I think they're playing even better. You, uh, uh, we are losing 1.4 trillion Uganda shillings, I think. Mm -hmm. That economy, the, the economy between Uganda and South Sudan is about 1.4 trillion mm -hmm. a, a day. And I think that is not coming through. Someone, uh, I think the chairperson of Casita said it was a $1 million uh, one million dollars, which would be about three billion shillings. And the other day, President Museveni directed that our treasury should pay Ugandans who supplied the government of Sudan for all these yes. years who yes. have not been now, paid. Now, the question is, <laughs> by discussing <laughs> this and date. focusing it on Uganda, what Uganda I'm needs to do, what it hasn't done, and ignoring <clears throat> the other players, Kenya, Ethiopia, the international community, the Americans, the British, the Chinese, I'm and saying, we, and, and narrowing our discussion. No, 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 no. I'm saying there should I be a national. An international solution. Mm. I did not talk about even if you are making, solution. even if you are making a basket. Mm. Okay, there is that national, the bottom, mm. or even the top that you have to the, the, this you put across and then weave around that. Mm. So that's why we are saying that if Uganda and Ethiopia or the region or, or neighbors to Sudan created that national <clears throat> around which a solution would be weaved around instead of each one going for Ethiopia was there recently to get his children and after getting the part of their children they went back okay uh, and Uganda has gone back has gone, Uganda in to, has get gone back to get his citizen yes. but uh, also uh, as you know because my own information is that Kiri was here that Friday for two hours and went back again Sunday came here and uh, the place went on fire including bombing of uh, Mashar's residence in his defense again uh, coming here and uh, going back on Tuesday to declare cessation of hostilities. So uh, those who are tracking uh, the movement of these guys mm. are almost pointing again, uh, are bringing Uganda into the picture. So what has Kir been doing in his three visits within this short time in Uganda, privately, and going back? So who has he been meeting? What was discussed? What was agreed? So the, the, these are from the intelligence sources, okay? And, uh, and uh, why, take, why take gunships to bomb a house of the first vice president in the defense in his headquarter? Mm. Uh, I mean, which happened on Monday. Even if you are the one, I don't know even how you could have survived. We don't know where he is. So even if you finish Mashar now, okay? Now, then where does it leave uh, South Sudan? Okay. Uh, maybe we'll pick so that up. I uh, think a solution needs to be weaved around if the region could work together with the, with the, with the international community, a solution will be found. Uh, maybe we'll pick that up uh, uh, in a moment. You said uh, the UN took over East Timor. Yeah. The, 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 the role of the UN in this South Sudan conflict is highly checkered. Uh, from what I have heard, especially from the Kir side, they're saying the UN mission in South Sudan is actually in bed with the Machar camp. That's what they were saying. Uh, well, yes, uh, and that uh, they've mm. been hosting in, uh, in that UN camp, they've been hosting uh, armed Nuelles. men. Yes, uh, armed Nuelles, and they helped to evacuate Machar the last time he was in a, little, in, in a pot of trouble and, and stuff like so that. How do you resolve look, some even of Even if you don't that the UN, look, let's talk of East so Africa. So they should be finished. The East mm -hmm. African uh, community no, I'm, I'm just wondering. who have run Charles. the UN for protection South Sudan should we have, have, have survived. They should, we should have finished yeah. that. No, no, so if they, the UN yes, is a if problem. If go with the guns UN. inside. Let's forget about the UN. Mm. South Sudan is a member of the East African community. Yeah, where is East African community? these are states with fairly formidable institutions, formidable armies. I mean... Okay. They are capable of, of sorting out that territory. Being this, and we are and comfortable the, for it to be our it's member. It's like having part and of we, your body. And when it is, is going through this pain, we cannot intervene as you, a You have Burundi and you haven't intervened same up now. Same story. This is the same story. And this <laughs> Let, let's pick this up after a short commercial <laughs> break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to this last segment of the Fourth Estate. And at some stage, we'll be opening the phone line so that you can share with us your views and opinions on the two key subjects that we have discussed this evening, which is the clashes between the police and Dr. Kiza Best and his supporters, as well as the conflict in South Sudan. Let me take a few messages. I have received a message here. This one is from Crispy and says, in a country where there is a legal vacuum, what is expected? Between the CPA, the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, and the Constitution, which one is the supreme legal instrument? Is there clarity on that? Honor? I, I don't know. I, th I think, uh, to me, the, the crisis in South Sudan, we as Ugandans know, is really lack of control. 
I mean, in this country, you can go from here to Fort Porto, go to Soroti. You know that there is control. The police is, is there, there are district authorities. So you can't just do what you want. You'll be arrested. But the crisis in South Sudan, whether it's uh, with the constitution or no constitution, is lack of control. First of all, the country, in terms of roads, we are all told is not entirely open. There's a lot of places which are deep in the bushes. And so there is no adequate control. Okay. And I even think if they kill Macharas, uh, David is urging, or even kill, uh, the, uh, kill, uh, kill, kill, still, it won't solve the problem. Because those endemic issues of lack of institutions, lack of respect for authority, lack of real authority, will not go overnight. Okay. I think I want to put uh, uh, Crispy's question into perspective. It is true after the CPA, mm -hmm. they tried to come up with a constitution. The constitutional making process was begun, but it was not facilitated. It did not complete its work. Mm -hmm. The draft came for swearing a new president. And then Riyak Mashar with his team raised a lot of issues. So the compromise was that let's use this interim for swearing. Then we, after, after that, then we, we now put a constitutional review process. Now then the violence broke out in 2013 before it was done. And that's why you see a president... Uh, ruling the country by decree, even when there's a parliament. In the 2013, now, because now let Kier, me come back. Kier, let me Kier come Kier back was to, to play with the constitution. He, he was trying then, to take advantage once he took power. Yeah, yeah and that's an argument and that uh, th th that's a very good argument that uh, um, uh, Professor Mahmoud Mahmoud Mamoud 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 makes yes, yes. in his Minority Report. Yes, uh, I think the full version of it is uh, published in the East African, which uh, for this it's week. Coming. Okay. Yes. Uh, so he, he, uh, the, then, the question is. Once he then got into power, court. and he had all this support from Uganda, from the international community, mm. he settles in and feels comfortable. Comfortable and wants to with block that dictatorial else. interim. Yes. Now, again, they agree something in Addis Ababa. We should have been brought and then domesticated to become part of the constitution. So when Mashar comes to swear in, okay, has the constitution been drafted to make Addis Ababa provisions part of the national constitution? No. So on what constitution do you make him to swear? And because so, so is there a lacuna? So, so there's a lacuna, uh, as, as you put it. So whatever was agreed that Addis Ababa has not been put in as part of the constitution and not even as part of the law. So Kiri is still ruling using the other interim, which was, the, which was being challenged. Okay. And the constitutional making process has not begun. So it's part of the problem. So I ask, what did then Uganda, what was the priority for Uganda while you are there? Mm -hmm. Why do we, uh, the military alone, why did the constitutional experts go in to support this good friend I call him bad luck Jonathan, you know, because there's good luck Jonathan putting the same style and black mm -hmm. and coffee and whatever. But there's bad luck Jonathan sitting in Juba, uh, who is now, who has been babysat by Uganda for so long, mm. okay, and is still putting on nappies. Okay. Um, uh, this is from our first, the, our first discussion from Monteja Sim. I said I would read this. He says, uh, Prokol, do you remember what you said on Andrew Mwenda Live program when you invaded KFM as Mwenda hosted Mayombo? Uh, the late, uh, rest in peace, and Beseje online from South Africa. Yes, I do remember, and you can replay that tape. I, uh, Mayombo was taking on Beseje. After two weeks after I had just been to South Africa, I had managed to convince President Museveni that what is in this thing between you and Beseje, that cannot be talked. Why should the country go up in flames because of the disagreement between you two? Why doesn't Beseje put a team of 12? You also put a team of yours, whatever number you agree, and Museveni agreed. And in fact, Kionga was to lead the Uganda side. So mine was now to take a letter to Besige's people. And I gave to Dr. Chibuka in South Africa, okay? And who promised to give it to Besige. And uh, two weeks after, Besige had not responded. And now when I had the conversation going on on radio, so mine was to go in and say, but uh, Besige, you're saying there are 25 conditions, okay? And all those conditions are available, a, a failed state. And in Uganda, it's going to war. Then my mind was saying, what is in this? Since you're going to talk after war, why don't you talk before war? So that was my contribution. Mm. Otherwise, the person who had been cleared to say a lot of issues and take Besji on was Mayombo. And he's the one who read a litany of things which CMI had. Well, Mayombo okay? doesn't have no, the so opportunity to defend, to unfortunately, give his unfortunately, side of the story. Unfortunately, unfortunately you Google, can replay no, that tape again. Don't worry about contradicting yeah. yourself. We are all reminded rightly that in politics, there are no permanent enemies. They are only permanent interests. So don't worry. No, no, if no, someone feels they are contradicting no, yourself, no, 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 no. But it has to be of, within the context. It happens mm. the best of No, no, no. It has to be within the context. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I don't think it should be taken as Bible truth. It's not. <laughs> let, let, and let, I've let, told let, you let, that let, I believe in <laughs> negotiations. Even now, mm. this, the, the way to end this thing, I, I told you that there should be a national 
uh, conversation. Okay, we, we, we need to uh, take this discussion. Just uh, if the callers can hold on uh, one minute and we bring the next part of the discussion into context so that when you make your contribution, it is within a particular context. Mm -hmm. The African Union, 54 heads of state or 54 governments, uh, if I can put it that way, because Kid is not in, uh, in Chigali, mm -hmm. have been meeting in Chigali. One of the fundamental achievements of the African <laughs> Union summit in Chigali is an African passport. And like we were joking during the break, if BCJ can't move freely in this country, if border border riders can be beaten for moving <laughs> in this country, and you cross where we have an East African post passport, we have an East African community, but you arrive at an airport in uh, Dar es Salaam or in Arusha and they ask you, uh, how long are you going to stay here? What is your business here? You do the same in Nairobi and they're asking you questions, for how long are you in Nairobi, in Kenya? And I'm wondering what this African passport, when it can't resolve a conflict in South Sudan, where you need UPDF soldiers to bring out Ugandans, it can't resolve a conflict in neighboring Burundi, just a few hours drive from Chigali to Bujumbura, it can't resolve that. And, and in, in the context of the conflict in South Sudan, <coughs> this AU summit, and uh, talking about uh, taking over, who has? Well, about the passport, again, this is your classic case of political symbolism. I mean, as you have said, we have seen the East African passport struggle for acceptance. It's very unlikely that most countries will take seriously the African passport. They will still insist on the national passport <coughs> until when you don't, uh, you have a, a federal system, uh, federal Africa. There is no way anyone is going to respect. I mean, no. they would respect it, but it would really not be the core document for people to, to prove that you Do, do you, you think the somewhere. AU has paid enough attention to the conflict in South Sudan? Or no, it has, that it, it, it has not. And this is, a, the, we have lived through so many conflicts in Africa and leaders have been meeting they make resolutions, but often, most there are very few conflicts which have been decisively resolved by the AU, in my view, or even the UN. It's normally the internal players. Mm. You need a critical mass within a country for the issue to be resolved. But I, I believe, and not to contradict myself, that in the case of South Sudan, it really needs to be treated as an international subject. And I think David. the AU, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is going to gloss over it, same old resolutions, and nobody is going to be willing to go and address the issue the way it should be addressed. David, so the African Union summit, whether it's in Chigali or in Addis Ababa or in, uh, in, in Malabo or in uh, uh, wherever it's held, uh, Harare, is more of a talk shop than s a, a, a group of people doing serious business. They were handed a, 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 an opportunity on a silver plate of a resurgence of conflict in South Sudan, just as they were beginning to gather in Chigali. And they walk out, um, I think, tomorrow, the other day. And, and you can't tell whether they have actually paid enough attention or they actually do have the solutions for conflict like the one in South Sudan. Well, we don't know what the resolutions are, so hoping that there will be side meetings like on IGAD, on the side, on South Sudan question, or the East African community on, uh, on Burundi question or what is simmering now in Uganda, whether we are uh, these tremors that we've been hearing and soldiers shooting themselves and uh, people attacking police outposts or taking uh, guns from barracks and so forth, at what point will it become a point of concern? But uh, now, of course, Kagame, which Paul, you give him uh, credit, uh, he will, at the end of the day, look back and say, when they met in Chigali, Ah, we introduce a passport. Whether mm -hmm. it works or not, it goes to the records of, uh, mm. of, of the Chigali of, communique, uh, the communique and what the achievements. But uh, while we move that far, what is it that we are doing to make the East African, East African passport work? And I think as this thing about traveling now using ID cards within East Africa, uh, which was agreed uh, by the coalition of the willing, the cow, uh, mm. okay, in East Africa, coalition of the willing, there was some cow there. Uh, and uh, uh, are we now moving, are citizens moving freely within East Africa using they the are. ID, I, 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 which I, is I, good? I, I know someone okay. who's watching this show possibly, yeah. and uh, with, his which is good. with his permission, I haven't saw the permission, but um, I, I, I traveled recently with, uh, and I found on, the, on, on my journey, uh, someone who was uh, uh, Professor Francis Tomaswa, mm -hmm. who said he had been using, he has a passport, but mm -hmm. he had been using his East African 
I mean his ID. national ID, ID to, to travel within the region, that, and it was that's commendable. Yes. So I think it needs to be done more, uh, and uh, otherwise these things become just uh, white elephants. So uh, the East African passport, who gets, where do you get it from, and how widespread are they available to citizens, or it is only for those who go to Arusha and come back because. Kampala has not ceded power to Arusha. Nairobi has not ceded power to Arusha, Dar es Salaam, Kigali, and so on. So ministers go, they meet, they come back. All the power is in their capital cities. So you have not actually ceded any power to that regional thing to get it to work. So it is still, uh, and then you're telling citizens that we are now getting closer. We, we wish we could. And I think in many ways, East Africans are getting more closer. But at the Africa level, and now the beneficiaries today is Kagame and uh, who, who, is the, who is the beneficiary now oh, and then Chadian president. Mm -hmm. These are the ones who have been issued today Idris. with uh, the African passports. Idris Tebe. Uh, so good luck. Okay. So Let it's still at that level, but I wish it could be made to work. But I think the solution is that can we get this one of East Africa, this one of ECOWAS, no, uh, this one of SADC to work? My, my, my hope is that actually AU would sit seriously and address itself, even if they spend the whole uh, whatever the entire week of their discussions on South Sudan discussing South and Sudan Burundi. and finding a solution, South Sudan and Burundi. Let's pick some callers online. Hello? Hello? Hello. Yes. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? I'm called Jonathan. I'm calling from Naguru. Jonathan, keep your question or comment brief. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm basically giving my, my points on uh, the police brutality we just saw. Sure. I don't think I would, uh, uh, can can justify what what we saw happening in the media, uh, saying uh, that the human rights fraternity are not condemning what the opposition is saying. Yet we are quite sure and aware that the government has the primary uh, duty to protect the citizens. And uh, by all means, you saw the citizens were not doing anything. They were basically just watching uh, the convoy of the CJ go. So mm. the action of the police cannot be justifiable in a in a state like uh, like Uganda. And secondly, I would say kudos to UPDF for bringing back uh, some of the citizens that were trapped in, uh, in 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 South Sudan. Though we still have a lot of issues to deal with, especially the inflow of refugees uh, in Uganda, which is a silent feature that is not yet being uh, being discussed. So it worries us at this point in in, in time. Uh, how we are going to be dealing with, uh, with, with that because it poses a security issue uh, in Uganda in itself. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan, for your comment. Do we have another caller? Hello? 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 Uh, yes, yes, good, uh, yes, good evening, sir. Good evening. Can you turn down the volume or of your TV set? Okay. Yes. Uh, what I want to your, say... Your name, your name, sir, and where you're calling from? I'm calling from Ba and I'm called Mwine. Yes, Mwine. Uh, my, my, I, I just want to say the problem of Uganda is just two people, Museven and Vesij. I wish if we go, God would talk to them and either they do something or they resign or I don't know. But with those two men, Museven is big headed, Vesij is times three big headed. The other day, he came to Marara and when he was entering the whole city, he, you know, he made the whole place chaotic. I don't think even if he, I believe even if Bessie became president, he will still be an opposition leader. Mm. He will find somewhere to become an opposition. So I think that is his type. That is his character as a person. But and, and from seven, I don't know. I don't know. Those two human beings <laughs> are, are very complicated. In fact, Tamare Mirund said that Bessie is a brand of seven. Seven is a brand so that he can stop others. But mm. that's not the big thing. The big thing is. For me, uh, the whole of this western part of Uganda, we are we, it is now full of Burundi. Burundi people are all over in our town. Mm. They are everywhere. And when you look at them, really, it is something that touches our heart. Mm. I want to say, to say, I think those AAU missions and whatever and meetings is just a disappointment to the African people. And as people in Africa, to see people in South Sudan being slaughtered because of two heads of state, to see what is happening in Burundi, people dying like, like, like rats, like a dog on road, and they cannot touch them, they cannot talk to them. I would wish and, and complete by saying that the biggest problem of Africa 
is that issue of whereby we not stop some people are too big in their countries and the local people we are beaten you see how now nowadays is beating us like beating cows and the other side you in, know in, 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 in whatever in Burundi people are being slaughtered during the day and these people are having a cup of tea in Serena in different places in fact you put it right by saying some of these meetings are just a show so I want to finish by this one point in, in my heart. President Museveni has his own setbacks. But one, one thing we want to thank him for is that he has, he has helped us not see this killing of every day. Mm. A country like Burundi, where people are killed a leader after leader, a commander after commander, and they are being killed, not kill, being killed by poison. So there is poison here common in Uganda. But the other side is a gun. Mm. Someone being shot down, someone being slaughtered, and the African leaders continue to go and take tea. It's a big shame to this African continent. Thank you, Mwine. Uh, maybe we are going to pray that God will help us. Thank you. Uh, uh, like I said earlier in the show, um, uh, even cows no longer get beaten the way yeah. Ugandans are being beaten that way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think if anybody found... Uh, the, the herdsman beating their cow, or the, their cow, cow like that. Well, they well, would beat them well, up. But you, but you see, as noted that at least in Uganda they don't kill, they eh? really beat. But no, they kill using poison. They kill using poison. They kill using poison. They kill using poison. Let's take another so call. Silent. You can't guarantee his government. Silent. Uh, oh, 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 let, let's just take another call. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, my name is Ibrahim. Yes, Ibrahim. I'm calling from Morocco. Yes, please. There's something you talked about, the citizens of Uganda, whenever they go to Kenya, they always ask him for how long are you going to be in Kenya, for how long are you going to stay here, what have you come to do? So I don't, I'm not even knowing what reason for Uganda and Kenya to sign that contract. Mm. Hmm? Me, according to my view, Museven is using this kind of East African thing just because of his benefit. Because me, right now, I'm in Morocco. Yes. But when, I'm telling, when we try to cross to, when you're going to Kenya to Lord War, right? The way... Hello? Go ahead, Ibrahim. We can, we're, we're listening to you. Yeah, when we try to cross to the other side, when you're going to Lord War, the way these guys are treating us as if we are some other people who are from maybe somewhere else, eh? mm. Mm -hmm. And there uh, are some elder people, these are people in power, the one who call themselves the uh, NRM people, they don't even think about that. Mm -hmm. People are suffering from Moroto to Lodwar, they are completely it's really suffering. You take your goods there, you have gone to something, you have gone there with a motorbike, you are going to sell your, to sell your something little, but the way those people are putting you there, but for all, when they come to Uganda, they are free here, yeah, they slap people from here, yeah, they are abused, they are free. So I'm not seeing any kind of that I think that East Africa community, what and what is it? This is just a personal interest. Thank you. Yeah. Th th thank you, Ibrahim, for your comment. Thank you, Ibrahim, Mwine, and uh, Jonathan. Gentlemen, le le let's bring this discussion back into studio and um, uh, bring it to an end. Uh, we want to stay a little bit longer on South Sudan. The conflicts in Uganda can be resolved. At least they, they haven't reached s such a level whereby, um, uh, li li like someone said, th they are not beyond redemption. No, but they when are you not. In, in fact, yeah. you even have a situation where you can at least go to jail and come out. But that's been my problem for some time. Uh, at least <laughs> you, you can go to jail and come out. <laughs> I don't think no, that's I think, look, th that's, that's the light point. Mm. I think uh, President Museveni's credit is that he has this knack for knowing when to pull back. And I think that's a very, s s it's quite a strength on his part, which even his opponents will admit. He realized that Besige had support in the election. And now that I've defeated him in the election, so to say, in the court, so to say, I've uh, diffused uh, his uh, prayers and he's in jail, but he has his supporters. He met some opposition people in State House. It's not him who released him, but at least there are those who believe that he could have used mm. his influence to get the courts to argue mm. otherwise. No, previously, he has uh, taken him to a yeah. different court and yeah, managed but, but to But then him that in. means that, that being able to pull back, I think that's what leaders need to do, to know when to pull back. You know you know your strengths, 
and then you know when to use it and not when to use it. Mm. Because I think it's, even in our own personal relations, it's a real about give and take, you know? And I, th I think that is helping Uganda. Mm. Um, mm. Let's say that uh, Besja is going to home to Rukunjiri. Mm. Did he jump on any, any radio along the way and, and mobilize people to come to welcome him from Liantonde, from mm. Barara, from mm. where? Or because of what has been going on in the media and the unfair mm. treatment here and there, people just rush to have a glimpse yeah. Of him, the underdog, so the underdog, the syndrome. underdog situation, the suffering, and so forth. Is he weather beaten? Is he what curiosity? People just mm. run. How can you say he, he caused chaos in Imbarara? Mm. I mean, really, the guy is just going along his way. Now, people enthusiastic, like a, like a motor rally, if you brought it now, when people run there, and so something which is not there every day. So, 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 how many go to comedian shows and so forth? Look, look, look at uh, Seba Gala coming from the U.S. after being in jail. Look at their kind of reception. Look at this guy in, uh, in uh, Big Brother Africa. Gaetano. Uh, okay, who did what, where, what. And people just want to see what. So, so now, how can that also? Because <laughs> no, we actually, cannot make course, a government. Course, I, I think cannot it, get to make a government me, of fall. Also, you, also yeah. I would look at it. Like when it, Bika football was introduced. And you see prime ministers from Buganda prostrating before the Kabaka, Abu Mayanja, the, the late uh, God, all his soul in turn of peace, and there's a Mogul race and so forth. There are people who panicked Charles, in government, and they wanted mm. us to stop it. Mm. But we had said, no, allow clan football. I mean, can that make your government fall? Mm. There's a way we handle things like those, and she diffused. Look, well, uh, Charles, so for me, me, for me, my, actually, my argument who, who from the beginning in terms of now? this year after, after his defeat, I think the police could have also treated mm. this as an issue of therapy. He needed to, yeah, to get really. over it. And police should have helped him to get over it. Yeah. But now they helped him, they built up his, his anger, his frustration. No, actually, they, they sort of feed it, you know? Yes. I, actually, I what, think what, Kehura and Besi are working together. What I saw... Because otherwise, what, what explains all this? What I saw of That when serious issues are going in South Sudan, then we are discussing about Kehura beating citizens and Besi being what? Something which is, in Singapore, should be allowed to pass, <laughs> to go. And then let the country focus on mm. our citizens who are now going through difficult times and our brothers from East Africa, South Sudanese, who are going through this. It's a diversion. And, and from Burundi. And I think a, we must as investigate as, 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 the relationship between Besige uh, and Kehura and Museveni and Saleh. I think we must find the and I, I, double click. Su su that surprising. I, 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 I know uh, General Saleh to be uh, more careful with his words. For him to voice that support for Kehura was um, rather surprising because uh, I, I do not think, I think uh, General Kehura should have uh, thought more carefully in his comments uh, responding to that BSJ press conference. And, and BSJ actually, the 62 days he spent in detention, I think brought out a more refined politician because he was focusing a lot more on issues in his press conference yeah. than he has done before. Yeah. Uh, he, 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 had, um, he was more coherent in explaining and separating his condition in prison, mm. what it has taught him, what he gets out of it, yeah. and why, where the country needs to move. And, and I think they provided him a, a great opportunity. And for Mwine, I, I thought what I saw in Imbarara was uh, people sub cheering him on. Yes, the, some stones were thrown, and they need to, we need to investigate and find out where those are coming from. Um, the last message we'll take is, uh, someone says, what lessons can we learn from the EU and Brexit issue and the future of the East African Federation, Economic Bloc, and the African Union? Now, for the send of this message, there is a new outfit in this town called the Uganda Council on Foreign Relations. I think they're examining this and uh, they will be discussing it in uh, greater detail. And when we have an opportunity, we'll be able to invite them to come to the show and uh, they can explain to us. Because these are former diplomats that have a rich understanding of uh, how foreign relations works, uh, uh, work. And of course, Brexit is an interesting discussion to have. Uh, Britain has a new prime minister as, as a result of that in uh, Theresa May. Uh, we, we, we saw a lot of people regretting why they had voted the way they voted. Uh, and, and, and lots of issues. You tie in uh, some of these incidents in France that have become so recurrent uh, on uh, whether Europe is stronger and better protected as a, a united entity or as individual countries. Our time is out. We need to get out of here. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Mm, thank you. Honor, thank you very much for making time for the show. <laughs>
Uh, thank David, you, sir, thank you very much. Responding uh, to that, but thank you very much. You wanted and, to respond uh, to this? Yes. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll have an so opportunity to discuss it um, okay. uh, on another okay. uh, on another uh, okay. on a different show, uh, not tonight's show. Thank you very much, and of course we continue to watch carefully and urge Ugandans. The senseless killings of Ugandans in the road carnage is something we all can contribute to avoid by being a lot more careful on the roads. Uh, massacre Road is becoming Massacre Road. Uh, that's what someone has uh, posted on Facebook. I mean on social media. They're calling it Massacre Road instead of Massacre Road. Uh, so many Ugandans are dying there. And of course, the contrast between the police officer who died in that accident mm -hmm. and the brutes that were caning people cannot be more stark than that. Mm -hmm. From me, it's a good night.